No, man, I just want to go the distance, you know? Nobody's ever gone the distance with Creed. Because, uh, if I'm still standing, when that bell rings, I'm going to know for the first time in my life that I ain't just another bum from the neighborhood. Yeah! Rocky Balboa. Brilliant freaking movie. Brilliant freaking movie. Um, brilliant writing. Uh, I don't know if you guys don't know the Rocky story. I could tell you the Rocky story. Rocky story. No, I'm not going to tell you the Rocky story. The Rocky story is actually uh, based on a guy named Chuck Wepner. If you don't know the story, if you don't know, now you know. You don't know the story. I mean, I'm going to give you the quick ro rundown before I get into it. And I hope you got time for it. And I hope, you know, uh, if you love Rocky as much as I do, you're going to want to know this stuff. All right. Sylvester Sloan was a struggling actor, right? And he wrote, he had this script or he had an idea of a script. And he had an idea of this guy, Rocky. And, you know, he, it was a, an Italian boxer. Now, he had the, he had the character, but he didn't have the identity of him. And he was writing the script, and he didn't like it, and he felt like something was missing. And uh, he had been working on it for a while, and it, it got put on the back burner a couple times. Anyway, the story is, and it's actually true, is he was struggling with this, and uh, the guy was dirt poor. Anyway, his buddy asked him if he wanted to go to a fight. All right, he wanted to go see Ali fight. Now, back then, the champs used to fight a lot. And they used to fight a lot of, uh, you know, rank contenders, but they weren't the number one rank. They would fight a couple times a year to keep the money going. And it's just how it was back then. The champ had to fight a lot. Anyway, Ali just came off a big win against Foreman. And he wanted a kind of an easy fight. And there was this white guy and uh, his name was Chuck Webner. Anyway, back then the tickets weren't that expensive. So anyway, this his uh, Sylvester Sloan's buddy asked him, he said, hey, I got an extra ticket to go see Ali fight. He's fighting this guy, Chuck, Chuck Wepner, big white guy from Jersey. Um, so they went to see the fight. This is where it all came together for Sylvester Stallone. Now, if you ever see the fight, you could probably YouTube it, Ali against Chuck Wepner. Chuck Wepner was really known as uh, bleeding all over the place, a brawler. Um, you know, it wasn't that great. He was in the top 10. I think he was ranked eighth or something, but really wasn't that known. Just, you know, um, and he was, he was, uh, he was basically, um, uh, I forget what the odds were, but it was pretty much a joke of a fight. Everybody was like, this guy, they were making jokes about the blood and they're going to have to hook up IVs to him because Ali's going to make him bleed all over the place. And uh, again, if you watch the fight, uh, pretty good fight. Ali actually destroys him, but the guy would not go down. Um, just bleeding all over the place, could barely walk. Uh... You know, and he had told the, the, uh, the, the somebody afterwards he just wanted to go the distance with Ali. They, he knew that, you know, he probably wasn't going to beat him, but he, he wanted to be standing at the end of the fight. And actually, it didn't happen. They stopped the fight with, and that back then there were 15 rounders. They stopped the fight with, I think, 29 seconds left before the guy could finish. And what's funny, even in that fight, in the movie Rocky... You know, Rocky puts Creed down in, like, the second round. Well, Wepner ended up putting Ali down. I think it was the eighth round. But, really, he had kind of stepped on his foot accidentally, and Ali went down. And if you hear the interviews of Wepner, he said Ali got up, and he was really pissed. And then he really beat the mung out of him. But um, that's where the story comes from, from Sylvester Sloan. And that actually comes right from the mouth. And actually... This Wepner guy ended up suing Stallone a long time after the Rockies, and they ended up settling out of court. This guy, Wepner, even fought Andre the Giant, the wrestler, uh, in the ring. And uh, um, in Rocky Three, Sylvester Stallone does the Hulk Hogan Thunderlips. So there was a lot of things taken. And they were actually, Sylvester Stallone actually met Wepner, and they were actually buddies there for a little while. 
uh, I would talk to him and uh, Wepner or uh, Sylvester Sloan actually won Wepner in the second movie. But Wepner, after the Ali fight, he was actually held as a hero in the neighborhood in Jersey. And everybody was just amazed that he went that long. And then he ended up getting into coke and uh, he ended up getting into trouble. He went to jail for like two years. Um, but he ended up straightening up his act. So that's a guy's name, Chuck Wepner. So any of you Rocky fans, but still an amazing script. I mean, th to think Sylvester Stallone, uh, you know, wrote that script. It's just brilliant, a brilliant writing job. And it's really a love story for all you got hardcore uh, fans. It's really a, a love story. He's trying to find himself during that. I mean, right in the beginning when he's looking at himself in the mirror, right? And he's going... Every time I give my turtles these moths, you know, I got a him in the, sh in the shell. And when you first see the movie, you're like, what the hell is he doing? You just think he's like an idiot. But he's practicing his, he's practicing his joke that he's going to tell uh, Adrian the next day at the pet store. So he's kind of rehearsing his joke. And if you see the next day, he's great acting job, too. He's kind of like tugging on her on her uh sleeve you know because he's trying to tell the joke but she's real shy and she's got to do work and she's not really paying attention and he's like hey good show shocks you know and and uh great movie great movie anyway how much time did i waste on that holy mackerel maybe i should do another video on uh on uh what i want to talk about now i'll talk about it real quick I'll, I'll try and get through it let's see what the pay is uh nine months i'm gonna go over a bunch of my weeks uh that that um a bunch of my past weeks to pay everybody's so interested in the pay man yo what's the pay what's the pay they don't know the price you gotta pay though last week one thousand one hundred and seventy dollars week before that eight hundred and sixty week before that eight seventy four week before that seven fifty three they're low numbers, right? All right, let's get back to it. Week before that, 1,036. Week before that, 1,093. Week before that, 1,062. Week before that, 1,082. Week before that, 994. So, there are the pays. Mostly about a grand you're looking at a week. Now, you might say, well, how come it fluctuates so that much, Jay? I mean, you know, if I'm counting on a thousand bucks a week, and then the next, you know, the one week you're you're getting eight eight hundred and sixty. Well, that's a big difference, you know. Let me tell you, in trucking, you can't count on the same check every week. You know, you can get around about, but you shouldn't be uh, spending more than your means. So, what is about one thousand dollars a week? Well, it's about fifty grand a year. That's what you're looking at. But I stand by, and now I've been doing this for nine months. <laughs> And like I said, you might say, why does it fluctuate like that, Jay? A um, couple reasons. For, for one, for my pay, I'm on dedicated account. If you guys have been watching my videos, um, I'm on a dedicated account. And some days I get one load, okay, from the distribution center. And some days I get two loads. Um, so uh you know if five days a week and I, I i work monday through friday i have weekends off which that's another thing a lot of you otr guys or, or you might hear all oh, a thousand dollars a week or 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 uh sixty thousand a year um they're uh they're probably working six days a week i only work five days a week i have two full days off i get home most of the time friday afternoon at like 12 noon or one o'clock in the afternoon, and I'll have to come back out. Like today, I wasn't at the distribution center till Monday morning at 4 a.m. So I get the whole weekend off. So, um, uh, I, I was going back to back to what I was saying. I get two loads, or some days I get two loads. Some days I only get one load. On the two load days, they're like shorter trips because I have to go from distribution out to loads, then back to the distribution, pick up another load. So they're like shorter miles, but I get paid more for short miles. Um, so on a day like today, I have one load, but I'm going to be driving like 400 miles. It was like 200 miles one way, 200. And I, I don't, there's not enough time for me to do two loads on that day. Also, you might say, why the fluctuation there? I've actually told 
Schneider that I only want one load a day. So I'm actually cool with the, the $870 a week uh, to do one load. When I do one load, it's really about an eight hour day. Um, it's about an eight hour day and that's why I like, you know, uh, so I can go home and the two loads uh, are more like a 12, 13 hour day. It's a long day. Uh, I don't get to go home. I usually have to sleep in the truck those days. So, but they can't give me one load every day because the, the, the route just calls for more. They're like, you know, they're just like, Hey, we, we'd love to help you out. But you know, uh, you're going to have to do two loads some days, which I'm cool with that. I understand. So anyway, that's my deal, man. That's what the pay is. That's what you're looking at. You know, I know all you guys, uh, I say this over and over again, and I'm going to say it over and over again. I totally understand. I got really, really lucky this first year of being able to get home as much as I do, being able to have a whole weekend off, being able to get home probably about, really, I could get home every day if I want, even on the 12, 13 hours, if I wanted to drive 45 minutes home, I can. I'm back at my distribution center every day so i'm always back at the same place you first year guys <clears throat> excuse me you first year guys i understand why people get out of trucking in their their first year you might think the the you might think wow 60 grand is a lot and in, in the re in the whole gist of it sixty thousand is a decent amount of money but you are not going to be home okay uh, you are, and in your first year, you might not, I'm going to stick by with my, my first year. I'm saying you're looking at between 40 and 50 and that's with not being home. You got to remember your first month, month and a half, uh, your training, uh, the second two, three months, you don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, they're not giving you too much because you know, they, they don't, they want to see what you can handle. So I'm running my, my time's running up here. So I, I don't want to rush it, but. You guys just need to remember that first year. That's why people, people, I think, get out of it. They have their this thought in their head. They think of that sixty thousand, and then they're out on the road, constantly away from their family, living out of the truck. Uh, then they start adding the hours up, and they're like, "Yo, this shit ain't worth it." Like, you can go to a a warehouse and get a forklift draw, a job, and probably work sixty hours a week and make about fifty grand. Uh, me personally, I'd rather be in the truck alone, shooting videos, freaking taking naps and stuff, being on my own, doing the, those 60 hours a week. Um, but once people get out here, you know, they think one way, they think, you know, well, I'm going to sacrifice for my family and, uh, you know, I need the 60, which is cool and I understand it. But once they get away, then it's like, you know, wow, you know, do I really want to, I mean, you can forget everything, man. You like bowling? You like bowling every now and then? You're in a bowling league? Forget it. Done. You like to go to the gym? You know? If you have a gym you like to work out and you you, you, you enjoy going there? Done. You're not doing that anymore. Uh, kids soccer games? Football games? Uh, kids dance rehearsals or something? You ain't going to be there. Done. Uh, you know, it's just... Uh, it's a big sacrifice. So that's why they say it's a life change. I got really lucky. Now, if you can handle that first year and depending where you're at, you can probably get a local job. But I can tell you this. I will tell all you, I can almost stand by this. Driving a truck is about a 60 hour a week job. You know, to, if you think you're going to work eight hours, nine to five, Monday through Friday, and, and, and that's how everybody's making their 60 grand, it don't work like that. They're making their 60 grand working about 60 hours a week. So even I've noticed, and I went and looked for a bunch of jobs. I'm going to have to cut this off soon. You're going to have to work 60 hours, um, even at a local job. It's usually a 12 hour a day job. So I got to cut this short because I'm not, I'm almost at 15 minutes and I don't have that over 15. So I'll talk a little bit more with you guys a little bit later. Anyway, thanks for listening to a Rocky story, and thanks for hanging in there with me. All right, peace. See ya.